and of course I've been talking a lot about uh, black culture and how it's really not a reality but an ideology. And about 24 years ago, I came to this same place with a sign. And at that time my sign said, I am not a black man, ask me why. And uh, to see what kind of discussions we get into. So instead of me standing in front of the camera uh, talking a lot, I'm going to see what people have to say about it. All right? Let's see what happens. How you doing? My name is Chris Jones. I'm from D.C. My name is Damian Poole, Baltimore, Maryland. Here's my sign. We are not a black people. All right, so when did a people of color begin to call themselves a black people? Start with you. Uh, I want to say when they got here. I want to say when we got when, I, when, when when we got moved to America, I believe, and, and got colonized and assimilated in, into this, to accepting what we were being taught. We were being told that what we are, who we are, uh, that we are considered African Americans and Black people and those things. I believe that and when we arrived here, I don't know the exact date. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to tell you when. All right. Good. All right. It's nothing like good knowledge. Right. I'm 60 years old. All right. So I lived through the uh, civil rights movement. All right. So before 1968, I was about to say before 1968, I was about to say. as far as the collective, the the entire group of people of color, we didn't start calling ourselves black until 1968. And then James Brown, 1968, 69, came out with Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. And that was the end of it. So what do you think? Of, give me your thoughts on that. Uh, I've really, as I, as I get older and I'm learning my culture more, I really don't uh, use certain terms anymore. Like, I don't, I don't identify myself with regular uh, titles like black people. Like, I try not to use that because I feel like there's no enrichment there. That how how do you identify yourself? Kings and queens, honestly. Okay, how about you? Same. But the same? So I feel like the absolute worst thing that happened to a people of color is the day that we became a black people. Because back in the 1960s, we weren't really that cognizant of the idea about words and how important words are and how important that the vibration of words are and how that, you know, like right now there's some scientists in Russia that they have just, they're doing experiments right now where they use words to reprogram DNA. And, um, and, and, you know, and, and so that what you think and what you call yourself is really what you become. And so if you look at, if you look at, the, at the type of people we were before 1968, education was really important. Let me get back on you. Education, our parents beat it into our heads, you got to go to college. You gotta, forget about finishing high school, you got to go to college because they never had a chance to. So they beat it in our heads. We were closer as a people. We uh, looked out for each other. We had each other's backs. We um, uh, were an elegant, rich people in terms of wh how, we, how we were. But then if you look at the last 50 years, since we became a black people, from 1968 to, 19, uh, to, to 2012, we have murdered more of our people than all the American soldiers that have died in war since the Korean conflict. What do you think about that? I think that's that's horrendous. I think that I know where it comes from. It comes from a lack of self-knowledge. I believe that a lot of us, especially speaking for a younger generation, we repel. Uh, oh, excuse me. Yeah, we we become repellent to anything that sounds like it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I feel like um, at this time, I feel like it's not enough leaders. There's a, there's a lot of followers involved, but there's not enough leaders, and the leaders who are leading aren't being respected. So I think a lot of it comes from a lack of self-knowledge. Honestly, if we knew who we were, if we knew what we were capable of, if we knew the truth about ourselves, I don't believe we would act less than who we are. Well, what is the truth? The truth is we are the on the top of the food chain, honestly. I believe, honestly, let alone everything about us from genetics to, to mental stability, I believe that we are capable of honestly taking back what is ours, honestly. I believe that we're capable of doing more than what we do now on a regular basis. I feel like I'm a part of the last generation of Black History Month. But like, remember how and during Black History Month you used to have it, you used to go to school, you used to tell you something, you about something important fact about somebody from our culture. 
and what they did and how that that level of importance got you to where you are. Yep. They now we've been subtracted from that. So now we have a lot of youth who don't understand where we come from or the people who came before us and what they did. What do you do for a living, if you don't mind me asking? I'm an educator. You're an educator and you are? I work in the medical field. All right, so every day that you go in the school, every day you go in the medical field, are you thinking, I'm a black man or I'm, a, I'm just going to work or are you just a human being doing the job? I'm a human being doing the job, but I'm always cautious of where I am who's watching, and how I present myself as a representative of my fellow brother. But you're saying that, the, that, that they've been separated from, you're the last in the, in the generation of black history. Well, but I'm, I'm asking you about uh, when we started calling ourselves black, but they didn't teach that in black history. So if, if I call myself black, or if you call yourself black, or black history, that's, not, that's really not truthful. Because blackness is an ideology. It's not a fact. Because I am not black, I'm brown. And as a matter of fact, the fact, the fact that we're all not black and we're various different shades of brown, that means that there's something other inside of you, in your DNA, other than your African heritage. I definitely understand where you're coming from. And I do agree with your statement. Um, I mean, I'm at the place, me personally, where these things, I'm learning what I'm learning. And, I'm internalizing, so I'm using it, and I'm, I'm vigilant. I'm not here saying, like, I'm not trying to say, like, exterminate the whites or exterminate this or, or any of that. I acknowledge my surroundings. I acknowledge what's going on around me, and for that, I try to better myself. And still being a representative, because regardless if we say here and say we're all equal, we're all equal, we're not looked at that way. So, so if, if that's the case in a place where, as an as a African-American man, things are slighted to me, I have to make sure that I'm still representing at 100%. Everything I do has to be 100% because I'm representing, I'm a representative. When people see me, they don't see, hey, your name's Chris, you're a nice guy, let me see this young black man here.